Hi, thanks ever so much for inviting me here. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so my talk is about the evolution of the design tools by which we modify evolution, um, which means that uh, my particular model um, that I'm experimenting with is a protocell, um, which has been described as living technology, and I'll talk about that in, in, in my talk. And then, um, you know, by mapping out the evolution of evolutionary design tools, then to look at what the implications of the emergence of these new and intrinsically complex technologies um, could be. Um, so I'm just going to test the technology that I've got in front of me, which is, is that? I've probably done the wrong thing, haven't I? It's, there we go. Okay, so I just want to make sure that we're starting on the right, right page. I mean, we all think we know what evolution is, um, but I think lots of people have very slightly different views on what evolution is. So where I'm coming from is that evolution is a naturalistic theory of the history of life on Earth. That's essentially what we do, or how, we, how we think about evolution. It's a process and it's a phenomenology and, and we can measure that through the organisational change of um, creatures with time. We do that through the fossil record, you know, we can look at um, differences between um, uh, morphology and species. Um, we can look at biochemistry, we can look at all kinds of different ways in which one organism might differ from, differ from another, and that gives us some idea of um, how uh, evolution has manifested itself. And also, it affects humans. So we're actually part of an evolutionary story, this story of life on Earth. And, and where I think the, where I'm going to start the story of the evolution of evolutionary design tools is with um, Charles Darwin's Origins of Species, 1859, where he describes a material physical relationship between um, uh, organisms and the environment they find themselves in as being responsible um, for this change in process over time. Darwin didn't invent evolution. Evolution um, and the, the idea of change with time um, had existed long before Darwin, but what Darwin managed to do was to express a philosophy and a relationship which has ena uh, enabled modern science to um, develop technologies that um, allow us um, to uh, influence and modify evolutionary processes more so than we'd been doing before because, of course, you know, we've, we've always had... Um, you know, the ability to choose partners, selective breeding of animals. Um, so the modification of evolution or this, this um, engagement with fate um, and our desire to influence our future has been with us as part of our culture ever since we can remember. So it's not something new to want to be able to um, influence um, evolutionary processes. Um, and, and of course, in, in the, the, the next part of the story happens around about 1953, when um, Watson, uh, Crick and uh, Wilkins um, discover the structure of, of DNA. And it gives a plausible um, uh, material um, basis through which we can actually start to investigate um, how uh, evolution relates to structural changes within organisms and gives rise to a science called biotechnology, which effectively sees the collapse of evolutionary time. Biotechnology is um, about the uh, transference of um, the uh, Darwinian processes or the um, genetic processes underpinning um, evolutionary theory and um, being transferred into bacteria, which have got much um, faster life cycles than us and by literally transposing genetics into bacterial vectors we managed to get a collapse in evolutionary time. What biotechnology didn't do though was to take the random element out of the, the, the theory of evolution and that's what the in the last 15 years synthetic biology has, has started to um, orchestrate. So synthetic biology differs from its predecessor biotechnology in what's called rational design engineering. So if one did think of the cell as being a machine, what the um, synthetic biologists are able to do is to take specific parts of cell machinery, modify them to create 
different outcomes without going through this process of um, random selection, which uh, is one of the, 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 the modern um, uh, theories that um, it drives evolution. Um, so synthetic biology takes out the, the, the randomness and introduces this notion of rational design engineering. Where I'm working is a slightly different kind of um, synthetic biology. I'm not interested in bio bricks or um, prefab tools, as it were, that have been produced by um, biology, like DNA, cell organelles, all those kinds of things. I'm interested in um, orchestrating the molecules of life, going down as, as, as low as we possibly can and looking at um, the self-assembly of um, uh, chemical systems and, and how we can orchestrate those to create an alternative kind of biological process that isn't limited um, by the functionality of DNA. Yes, DNA has a, has, has a fantastic ability to orchestrate and it's established, but what about if we open up the um, uh, solution space available to us? There are many different um, self-assembling chemical systems on Earth, and it would be nice to see what the design potential is if we give ourselves access to all these um, potential um, uh, design tools. And, and there's, a, there's a whole range of terminology that comes out of um, looking at the um, self-assembly of, um, of these these very molecular-based systems. Um, so um, living technology is one of these terms. Um, living technology applies um, to um, technologies, and, and it's, a, it's something that's not established. Bedeau et al. have written about it um, in Technoetic Arts, which was published at the end of last year. Um, so it's, it's not a mature description, but essentially t living technologies are being described as Technologies that exhibit some of the properties of living systems but are not considered to be alive. And my issue with living technology is that it ranges from everything from the internet down to the kinds of um, chemical cells that, 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 that I'm working with. So it's not a very specific thing, but I find it a useful phrase to um, try and describe how qualitatively... Um, you're getting different outcomes from these kinds of technologies that are inherently complex and not Cartesian in terms of their, in terms of their order. 